It's on the shelf in nearly every kitchen in America. It takes up an entire aisle in most grocery stores. We're talking about breakfast cereal, the single most popular breakfast choice among American teens who eat breakfast. With so many different cereals on the market, how do you choose which one to put in your bowl? You know, some of us have been eating in the same breakfast brand since we were little kids. Maybe not the best possible choice in terms of nutrition. <laughs> Definitely not. You know, maybe it's time for some more grown-up cereal. Something that's actually good for us. <laughs> Okay, but there's like a gazillion cereals out there. How do I know which ones are good for you? Well, it turns out everything you need to know is right on the side of the box in the nutrition facts label. Hmm. The first thing you want to notice is serving size. Everything else is reported for a single serving, so make sure you know how many servings you actually eat. If you eat two cups and the serving size is half a cup, you'll need to multiply all the numbers by four. And the next thing to notice is the two columns. The left is for the dry cereal only, and the one on the right includes half a cup of skim milk. You can see from the calories that the fat-free milk adds just 40 calories for half a cup. Right under total calories, you'll find total calories from fat. For most of us, fat intake should be no more than 25 to 35 percent of your total calories each day. Content is listed by weight on the left. The percentages listed on the right are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Of course, some of you are very active and need even more calories. The percentages will shift accordingly. Fat is broken out several ways. The total amount first. There's not much fat in breakfast cereal. Nope, but there is a lot of fat in other breakfast foods like bacon or sausage. But some you might not expect like the cinnamon roll or this muffin. The label breaks out the different kinds of fat because even though they have roughly the same amount of calories, their effect on your body varies quite a bit. Saturated fats promote production of cholesterol, more than the body can get rid of, so you want only small amounts. Saturated fats are the ones that are solid at room temperature, like animal fat, butter, and cheese. Trans fats are often found in commercial baked goods and snack foods like crackers and chips, vegetable shortening, stick margarine, and fried foods. Trans fats are manufactured fats. They pump more hydrogen molecules into a liquid oil so that it's more solid and keeps longer. Might help that cookie, but trans fats are no good for your body. They raise your bad cholesterol and lower your good cholesterol. You want to keep your grams of trans fat as low as you can go. Really trash talking the trans fat. Well, haven't you ever seen a label where it says 0% trans fat? That's why. So we should only eat a little bit of saturated fat and avoid eating trans fat altogether? But aren't there any good fat? Oh, well, we're getting to that. The unsaturated fats are nuts. The unsaturated fats can be polyunsaturated or monounsaturated. Both are liquid at room temperature and can have a positive effect on your cholesterol levels, especially when used in place of saturated fats. Monounsaturated fats include olive and canola oil, peanuts, pecans, and avocados. Polyunsaturated fats come from fatty fish like tuna and salmon, nuts, and sunflower seeds. Also from other vegetable oils, corn, soybean, safflower, and sesame oils. Some people are phobic about fat, but we do need some fat in our diet. Fats deliver essential fatty acids the body can't manufacture, like the omega-3 fatty acids that are good for your heart. Plus, your body needs fat to digest and absorb vitamins A, D, E, and K. No more than 300 milligrams of cholesterol per day because too much cholesterol can raise your blood cholesterol and increase the risk of heart disease later in life. Sodium. Most Americans get way too much with our salty snacks and processed foods. A single teaspoon of salt gives you 80% of what you need for the whole day. So for breakfast cereal, look for cereals that provide less than 5% of the daily value. Carbohydrates are where you'll find the fiber and sugar listed. 
Dietary fiber is something most Americans don't get enough of. You need 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day, so look for at least 5 grams at breakfast. Whole grains and fruits are really good sources of fiber. Fruits are the best way to get your sweet fix since the complexity of these carbs slows down digestion and prevents the blood sugar roller coaster. When it comes to sugars, the less, the better. As for protein, more is better. This is what keeps you going until lunchtime. Hmm, next is a list of vitamins and minerals. It differs in different kinds of cereals. And at the very bottom, the list of ingredients. Hmm. Wait, what is some of this stuff? Zinc oxide, turmeric, pyrodoxian? <laughs> Looks like you have to crack the code that the manufacturers made. <laughs> Hydrochloride, riboflavin, monotriate, diamine, bamo, niciamide. Ingredients are listed in order of amounts, with the first ingredient listed making up the largest percentage of the ingredients. If sugar, or worse, corn syrup, is the first or second ingredient, this is not the best choice. Enriched flour sounds good, but it's missing the whole grain. Look for fiber grams on the Nutrition Facts panel and a whole grain first on the ingredient list. Watch out for words like shortening, partially hydrogenated, or hydrogenated vegetable oil. That's trans fat, the bad guy fat. If there are added vitamins, they'll all show up at the end of the ingredient list. A big part of eating right is shopping smart. When you know what to look for and read the Nutrition Facts label, you can make good choices for yourself. Everything you need to know is right there on the package. Breakfast because it's in the fine print.